Many thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. There is a colossal amount of information surrounding tips, tricks, and techniques with regards to photo editing, but the basics can really be summed up rather quickly, which in turn not only is the, the foundation of any good photo editor, but also the most important part of it all, as the, the basics are really where the majority of all the heavy lifting occurs, and the rest is just polishing the fine details. And that's the purpose of this week's video, all about a photo editing workflow one can use as a, a framework or a guideline on every single photo they edit moving forward. And before I do forget, I just want to say I have the winner selected for the 250,000 subscriber giveaway of the complete Nissi filter kit, so be sure to stick around for that. So to jump right into it, one of the things that I love to do inside of Lightroom is to basically organize it for my own personal taste. And this is the photo we're gonna be working on. This is an image from my recent trip to uh, Menorca, Spain. Of course, the photo on the left is the raw unedited file and the image on the right has some edits applied to it. So I'm gonna come down here. Let's only work on the raw file, of course, and I'm gonna select the develop panel here. And I like to organize this. So this is the way it looks, uh, the, the default order that Lightroom comes with right here, but you can customize this to whatever you like. And I like to customize this from top to bottom in order of the workflow that I like to go through. So what I would do is I come up here, right click, and I'm gonna hit Customize Develop Panel. Of course, I wanna leave the basic panel at the top. I like the tone curve right beneath that. And then I like to put the calibration section beneath the tone curve. And I'm gonna leave the color grading, oh, I'm gonna actually move the color grading up here. And then I like the HSL section here. I like to keep all of my colors right through here. Calibration, color grading, HSL. I'll leave my detail section here. I like to put my effects section right here. And then I just leave lens corrections and transform at the very bottom because those are really the two sections that I use the least. So whenever I'm going through my editing workflow, I know that I start at the very top and I work my way all the way down to the bottom. And that just helps me to one, stay organized, but two, you know, kind of remember the, the workflow that I, I like to go through. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. And what Lightroom does is it basically just relaunches it to the saved platform, or I should say the saved order of the, uh, the different settings that you applied in your, uh, your panel section or your develop panel. So let me go ahead and just make this larger on my screen again. And now you can see that it has everything customized in the order that I'd like to apply it. So the very first thing that I like to do, as I mentioned, is start at the very, very top and I work my way down. And this is a real quick workflow. Anybody can apply this to any photograph. And I literally go through the same exact process on every single image. And not only does it make me a more efficient photo editor, it makes it, uh, it, it enables me to ensure that I'm hitting all the things that are most important to me and I'm not skipping anything. And at the same time, staying organized as well. So I like to come up to the basic section and the very first thing that I like to do is go ahead and just balance out the exposure a little bit. As we can tell, this image is definitely underexposed. And I like to just kind of work my way from the top of the section down to the bottom, you know, bring the highlights down a fair amount here. We can bring the, the shadows up quite a bit as well to bring back a lot of that detail. Bring the white point up a fair amount as well. We can bring the black point down just a touch to about right there. I always like to soften down the details, usually right around negative 20 on clarity, increase the texture just a little bit, add a little bit of negative dehaze. That's a great way to, to kind of soften down the details of an of a overall photograph and just kind of just soften down the image. Negative clarity, positive texture, and a little bit of negative dehaze is something that I, I really apply to just about every single photograph. And then from here, I usually like to go ahead and adjust my white balance. I find that once you balance out the exposure, that's a better time to do your white balance adjustment. So I'll click the, uh, the color picker here and just kind of click something that is uh, a fairly neutral color. If I can find something here, just kind of maybe a, a white tone here. Something like that looks pretty good. A very small adjustment. Then I'll take the saturation to 100 and that's just an easy way to see if there's any kind of unrealistic color cast from that white balance adjustment, which there is not. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset that saturation to zero. And then from here, the very next thing I always like to do is adjust my crop. You know, just about every single photograph that I capture, I know that I'm going to crop it in some particular way. So this is the stage where I like to go ahead and apply that. So I'm gonna come over here to the crop tool. I know I wanna bring this up because I don't like this part of this uh, really cool fence here. That's what, this is what really drew me to this uh, overall composition. I like this fence. 
So I'm gonna bring that up to about right there. Maybe we'll even bring down this a little bit here. I think that horizon is just a little bit crooked. So I'm gonna go ahead and just straighten that up manually real fast. And I think that that is looking pretty good. Let me actually just scoot this over just a touch to about, I think right here. No, right there, because I like that buoy right there. So I think that that is a good starting point right there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and close down the basic section. And now I know I go to the tone curve right underneath the basic section. So that's what I was saying. There's so many things to, to edit. There's so many different options in, in photo editing uh, software today to where it's really easy to skip something, to overlook something. But when you can start at the top and work your way down to the bottom, you can rest assured that you're not going to miss anything. So I'm going to move down to the tone curve. I'm going to go ahead and just lift this point up a little bit here. And this is just personal preference. I'm going to darken the, uh, the darker midtones. I'm going to increase the brighter midtones just a little bit here. Toggle that on and off just to add some contrast. And I think that that is looking pretty good right there. Might darken this down just a little bit. Add a little bit more contrast to this point. And I think that that looks good there. Now I'm gonna close that down and go straight to calibration. And calibration is one of my favorite ways to edit color. I'm gonna go ahead and boost the uh, blue primary right there. Increase the saturation of the green primary channel. Might bring this over just a little bit as well to uh, what do I want to do actually? Yeah, maybe just a touch to about right there. I just boost this up a little bit more. And that color there, the red primary saturation, toggle this on and off and you can see what that has done. I think I'm going to boost this blue primary just a little bit more as well to that point. I think that that is looking good. And if you're not familiar with how the color calibration section works, I created an entire uh, free tutorial for you, which I'll link below here or link above and, and throw a QR code on the screen as well. If you want to download that, I send out 100% off discount codes for that so you won't have to pay anything for it but it's a, a great uh, resource to figure out all the, the the nuts and bolts associated with the color calibration section inside of Lightroom so the next thing I want to do is I'm going to come down here to color grading now I don't use color grading on every photograph but for this one I think I am going to tint these highlights a warmer color right here and I think I might even tint the midtones a kind of bluer color like that right there very very subtle as you can see what that has done not a huge difference but just a little bit and then i'm going to come down to the hsl section here i know that i definitely want to reduce the uh, the kind of this orange color a little bit the saturation so i'm going to bring that down just a touch nothing crazy but just to about right here i might come over here to luminance if i want to yeah i think i might bring up the luminance of the green i like what that's doing to about right here and i'm going to come over to the hue section and i think i'm going to bring this down, shift it more over here, just so that the, the grass kind of blends in a little bit more. I find that when there's so many different colors in a photograph, sometimes it can become a bit distracting. And I'm trying to kind of simplify the color palette just a little bit, if you will. And now I'm just gonna to continue to work down in my develop module. So the next thing I have is detail right through here. And I'm gonna go ahead and sharpen this up a fair amount. We can bring up the detail to maybe 75, bring that radius up to two maybe i can actually bring this up just a little bit more we can kind of zoom into an area here whoops and just kind of toggle this on and off so this is before and after before and after and i think that that is looking pretty good there and then the effects panel is next I always like to put a nice subtle vignette on my photographs maybe not quite that much but to about right there and then lens correction and transform are things that i really don't do a whole lot so i'm just going to go ahead and skip those and then i like to go ahead and do um, my masking so once the overall exposure is all kind of balanced my colors are, are balanced or no, not balanced but i should say enhanced or desaturated whatever i like to do for that particular image this is when i start to kind of look at local masking and see if there's any areas of the photograph that i do want to mask so I'm gonna come up here to the mask section. I know I want to put a, um, a radial gradient across this area here because this is where the sun was coming through. It was just about to set. So I'm gonna put it on a little bit of an angle, kind of drag it all the way across here. I really want to enhance that sunlight right through there. So something like that, bring those highlights down a touch. We could soften down that clarity some. We could kind of do a little bit of negative dehaze right through there as well. We can warm it up some if we wanted to. Nothing like that, of course, but something very, very subtle. Let's toggle this on and off. You can see what that has done. 
I also want to come down here and do a linear gradient and just kind of drag it right across this area here because it's a little bit dark for my liking. So I'm just going to bring back some of the shadows just a little bit right through there. Uh, no, I was going to do something with the black point, but I'm not going to increase the exposure just a touch there just to bring back some of that detail in that bottom right hand corner. And then of course I had mentioned that this fence, I, I love the fence that, uh, and like I said, that's what really drew me to this overall composition. But I wanna bring out a lot of that detail with the fence. So I'm gonna use the adjust adjustment brush just to kind of paint in a little bit of additional clarity and texture just to the fence itself, just to kind of draw the viewer's attention to a lot of that beautiful texture that uh, resides in the fence. So I'm gonna come up here to create new mask and let's select brush. And I'm gonna bring up the, the clarity a fair amount I'm not gonna use it at this amount, but it just helps me to, to see exactly what I'm doing. And I'm gonna go ahead, reduce the size of this brush just a little bit. And I'm just gonna paint all around the fence area, right through here, definitely like all up through here, down there, this area. Let's put a little bit over here, reduce the size of that brush just a little bit. I'm using the bracket keys on my keyboard to adjust the size of the brush. Let's hit the shortcut key O to see exactly what we're doing. And I think that that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna bring down that clarity to a more realistic value. Maybe pump up that texture a little bit. And then let's just kind of zoom in here and see exactly what we have done. So this is before and after, before and after. And I think that that looks good. Let's uh, go back to fit here and let's toggle all these masks on and off. So this is before and after, before, and after, and I think that that is looking good right there. And now I think I'm just gonna come back to the basic section and just increase this just a little bit more, maybe bring down those highlights a little bit more as well. But that is the, a, a workflow that's super, super easy to do. You can really apply it to, to any photograph there is. And then once, I should say any photograph that you edit, and then once I run through that complete workflow, the very last thing I like to do is just kind of clean up the overall photograph. Just look for maybe sensor spots or just something that's kind of weird sticking into the frame or just any kind of distractions. And I've already looked through this photograph. I definitely don't want to remove these, these yellow buoys. I like it in the, the photograph. I think it complements the yellow in the scene. Plus it kind of balances out the left side of the photograph. What I do think I will do is just kind of scoot this crop over a little bit more. I felt like those buoys are too close to the edge. I think that that looks a little bit better. I do think I saw some, yeah, some burnt pixels right through here, like this right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the Band-Aid, leave content to where fill checked, and just go ahead and click these and remove them. And that is perfect. And another quick way, thing to do, to, if you're having a hard time visualizing where there might be any kind of issues, you can hit that Visualize Spot button at the very bottom. And that's just a good way to see if you have any sensor spots anywhere throughout the photograph. But I think that it is looking pretty good right there. But by organizing your develop panel in this way, or whatever way fits your workflow, is definitely a great way to help you rem to remember what your workflow is and to ensure that you don't skip anything. But this exact workflow can be applied to any photograph and it's exactly what I do on every single image as well. So I hope that that's something that might help those who are just getting started with Lightroom or photo editing to feel a little bit more comfortable because I understand it can be kind of uh, intimidating at first, just wondering, you know, do I have to move all of these sliders or where do I start, where do I end, how do I not forget something or, or whatever the case may be. So hopefully this workflow will help you out. Now, before I get to the giveaway winner, I just wanna say a big thanks to the sponsor of this week's video, which is Squarespace, who I use for all of my website and e-commerce needs. Squarespace provides a robust and beautiful online platform to develop your website. You can showcase your photography using Squarespace's professional portfolio designs and display your work using customizable galleries in order to make it your own. And with Squarespace's online store feature, you'll have access to all the tools you'll need to start selling your physical, digital, or service products online immediately. You can even use Squarespace's new asset library so you can upload, organize, and access all your content from a single place in order to easily find and use them across the entire Squarespace platform. So if you're looking to start a new website or possibly upgrade your current website, check out squarespace.com forward slash Mark Denny for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. Now, as far as the giveaway is concerned, the 250,000 subscriber giveaway, thank you all so much for those that took the time to watch the video a couple weeks ago and leave a comment. I really do appreciate it. So the, the giveaway prize was this complete Nissi filter kit 
with the uh, all the graduated neutral density filters, solid neutral density filters, the filter holder, the filter kit, and the circular polarizer, which is an almost $1,000 value. I believe there was over almost 1,500 comments on that video to enter the, the, the giveaway. And like I mentioned, it really does mean a lot. So thank you all so much. And the winner, and it was a completely random drawing as always, but the winner of the Nissi filter kit is a gentleman by the name of Mark Wilkins. So congratulations, Mark Wilkins. You are the winner of the Nissi filter kit. Uh, get in touch with me, Instagram. You can send me a, a message via my website, uh, however you wanna get in touch with me, and I will make sure that I get this uh, complete filter, sit, filter set sent out to you. So if you have any questions about this week's video, please leave those in the comment section below, and I will get back in touch with you as soon as possible. And if you enjoyed it, of course, if you could, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And as always, I really do appreciate you taking the time to check out this week's video, and I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.